Unit 5.5 Theorems about roots of polynomial equations. In this class, we can learn how to solve equations using the rational roots theorem. And we are also going to learn how to use the conjugate root theorem to identify to identify the roots of the polynomial equations. In the last part of the unit, we're going to learn the Karl's rule of sign, which is going to help us to sketch the graph of a polynomial functions. Let's start with the rational root theorem. So according to the rational root theorem, it said p over q, where p is the factor of a o, which is the constant term. And q is the integer factor of a n, which is the coefficient of the leading term. So P and P over Q basically they're referring to let me rewrite one more time is the factors of the constant term over the factors of the coefficient of the leading term. So in other words, in this case, in this example, 21 is the leading coefficient. So the factors are all this. And the factors for the constant term in this case is 10 are all this. So based on the rational word theorem, we can use P over Q to list all the possible rational roots for these equations. So remember, P is the integer factor of the constant term, and Q is the integer factor of the leading coefficients. So we have like different combinations right now. Let me list all the possible combinations. So we start with the factors of the constant term, which is this one. So I have plus or minus one over plus or minus one of this uh, factors of the leading coefficient here. This is the first possible words, rational words. And I have plus minus one over plus and minus three here. And I keep doing it. So plus minus one over plus minus seven. And then I have plus one over plus minus 21. So the first set is done. The next set is going to be plus minus two. Talking about this one now. And over plus minus one. So I plus two over plus minus three. I plus minus two over plus minus seven. And then plus minus 2 over plus and minus 21. So the second one is done. So the third one now. Plus negative 5 over plus 1. And then I have plus negative 5 over plus over, uh, minus 3. And then plus minus 5 over plus minus 7. And then plus minus 5 over plus minus 11. And then here's the last set. So I get plus minus 10 over plus minus 1 right here, plus minus 10 over plus minus 3, and then I have plus 10 minus 10 over plus minus 7, and then plus minus 10 over plus minus 11. So four sets. But if you try to simplify this, it's basically equal to plus 1, minus 1, and for this one you have plus 1 over 3, and minus 1 over 3, and then you have 1 over 7, I'm not going to write the plus sign anymore, so minus 1 over 7, minus, and then I have 1 over 21, minus 1 over 21, I have 2, minus 2, for this one trying to you know, show it to you and then you have 2 over 3 
or negative 2 over 3, I got 2 over 7, or negative 2 over 7, I got 2 over 21, or negative 2 over 21, I got 5 over 1, which is 5, I'm sorry, 5 or negative 5, and then I have uh, 5 over 3, or negative 5 over 3, and then I have 5 over 7, and then and 5 over 7, and then I have 5 over 21, or negative 5 over 21, and for this set, you're going to have a 10, or negative 10, or 10 over 3, or negative 10 over 3, 10 over 7, or negative 10 over 7. The last two possible rational numbers is going to be 10 over 21, or negative 10 over 21. So all these are the possible rational roots for this equation. The question right now, among all these possible rational roots, which one is the right one? So it's a lot of work, but we still have to do it by plugging every single possible roots here back to the original equation and test see if it's equal to zero. Remember the factor theorem, if we evaluate the value of this possible roots and the result is a zero, that means this is going to be a factor and this is going to be the roots. So we have technically to try every single one. So after we try every single one, we find these two when you plug in, it's actually negative, negative 2 over 3. So when you plug in negative 2 over 3 right here, and right here, you end up getting 0. And that means x plus 2 over 3 is the factor. Same thing, if you plug in negative 5 over 7 right here, okay, which is uh, right here, negative 5, 7, and then uh, negative 2 over 3 right here. If you plug in negative 5, 7 back into this x and you s evaluate the whole thing, you end up getting a 0. That's why it is a root. But this is an extreme case. When I say extreme case, because you have a lot of factors for the constant term as well as the leading term. In the next slide, when we talk about the other example, it could be a little bit more simpler. Here's another example to show you how to use rational root theorem to guess, you know, the first root. So we basically using the same formula right here. So we have to find the factor of the constant term, which is 5. So the factor of 5 is plus and minus 1 and plus and minus 5. And the factor of the leading coefficient is positive and negative 1 and positive and negative 2. So these are all the different combinations for these two. So for example for this one, you start with like plus oh, minus 1 over plus and minus 1. So we end up getting this two. And then we have um, plus and minus 5 over plus and minus 1, which is this one over this one according to this form. So that's why we end up have 5 and negative 5. So we have all these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 possible roots. Technically, we have to plug in, plug all these values back to the original equations and to see if it is equal to 0. If it is equal to 0, we know this is going to be the root. But later on, I'm going to show you another video clip of how to use a TI-83 or TI-84 to help you save a lot of work. But for now, take it as given, so we know negative 1, negative 1 is the root. Since negative 1 is the root, we know the factor is x plus 1. So please remember that factor is different from the root. The following video clip is going to show you how to use a calculator to check which rational roots on your list is going to be the roots for the polynomial equation? Hit y equal 
Then enter your equation in y1, which is 2x cubed plus, I mean, minus x squared plus 2x plus 5. Now hit second mode to tell the calculator you're done. Now hit second table sets. To tell the calculator, you're going to change the setup. The number here doesn't matter. You just use your arrow key to scroll down to the independent variable part. They always default as auto, which highlight in black. You have to change it to ask. Use your arrow key, hit enter. Now you hit second mode to quit to tell the calculator you're done with the setup. And then hit second table. You see a blank table. Remember, you just have to enter x because y depends on x. So enter all the rational root. The first one is 1, you get 8. And then you enter negative 1, and the rational root, you get 0. And then you can enter all the rational roots that you have on your paper so that you can tell which one end up getting 0, which is going to be the rational roots for your polynomial equation. You just keep entering all the rational roots to check if y is going to be equal to 0. After entering all these rational roots, we know negative 1 is the only rational root because when x equal to negative 1, y equal to 0. In the last PowerPoint, I show you how to use the rational root theorem to find the very first root. But it's not done yet because we didn't really solve the whole equation. And this example is going to show you how to do the rest of the whole thing. I explained the first three steps in the last PowerPoint slide already. But let me do a quick recap. So we are basically using the factors of the constant term over the factors of the leading coefficients. So that's why you come up with all possible rational roots at this list. So you make use of the calculator, the graphing calculator, then you find out um, two is a root because when you plug in 2 in the equations you end up getting a 0 so according to the factor theorem 2 is the root and the factor since 2 is the root so the factor is x minus 2 so again the root is 2 but the factor is x minus 2 that's why you have this x minus 2 right here so once we know the root is 2, we use the syntactic division. This is the syntactic division, which you learned in the last unit, syntactic division. The reason you do the syntactic division is because you want to find this quotient, which is this one. So once it becomes quadratic, we can make use of the quadratic uh, factoring skills to factor this quadratic expression. So 15x squared minus 2x minus 1. We make use of AC formula to the factoring of AC. Then you end up getting 5x plus 1 times 3x minus 1. Once we get that, we can set this up equal to 0. 5x plus 1 equal to 0 and solve for x and that's why the fact I mean the root is minus 1 over 5 and the other root is minus 1 over 3 so all together you have three uh, rational roots which are 2 negative 1 over 5 and 1 over 3 so far we have just learned rational root theorem in other words the roots that we are dealing with so far are rational number. But what happens if the roots you have is irrational? For example, uh, say square root 2. So whenever you have a square root 2 as the root, you know there's always come in pair with the negative 
square root 2 as a root as well. That's what we call conjugate with theorem. So in other words, if you have a rational, if you are given a irrational root of square root 3, so you know there's another root, irrational root of negative square root of 3 as well. The conjugate root theorem also applies to complex roots as well. So in other words, if you find when you solve a polynomial equation and you end up getting say a um, a root of a plus bi, then you know there's another root. You may not be in, you, you you may not be able to see in the process, but you know there's another root of a minus bi to go with these roots. So for example, if you, after you solve a polynomial equation, you find a root. You have a complex root, which is say three plus uh, 4i, then you know the other root of this polynomial function is going to be 3 minus 4i, which is the conjugate of 3 plus 4i. The last concept that we're going to learn in this unit is the square root of sine. So what it mean is, based on this rule of sine, we can guess the number of positive real roots and the number of negative real words of a polynomial functions. How does it work? All you need to do is to count the number of the sign change between the consecutive coefficients of p of x. Say if you got the number of sign change 3, then you're going to have either 3 positive real words or you're going to have a 1 positive real words. You cannot, really, you cannot really tell, you can only just guess. It's easier for me to show it to you in an example in the next slide. Here's an example. So you have a polynomial function of x cubed minus square plus 1. So in order to find the possible number of real words, we check the sign change of the consecutive coefficients. So if I want to check the number of uh, positive real roots, we have to do p of x, which is the original one, x cubed minus x squared plus 1 equal to 0. So we just count the what? The sign change. So without anything, we have a plus sign here. So this is one sign change. And there are two sign changes. So the possible number of possible real words is either two or none. The next we're gonna check is the number of negative real words. So this time we have to use p of negative x to find out. So we plug in negative x to the cube minus negative x squared plus 1 to see how many sign change involved here now. So minus x cubed, we still have minus x cubed. And then we have minus x squared, we have x squared. And then it's plus 1 equal to 0. So this time we have no sign change here because both are negative, no sign change, and we have one sign change. So that means we have one negative roots. So if you can recall, cubic function is always in this shape, and we have one negative zero or roots but we have none uh, positive roots and that's how the Descartes rule of science works